An astronaut reaches out for aid in a mysterious wild zone, but his communicator isn't working. He feels as though he has entered some sort of time and space rift, probably not even Earth anymore. He starts to flee in panic after hearing a roar in the distance, but it is in vain, since a T-Rex that is hungry catches him nevertheless. In the meantime, back on Earth TV anchor Matt Lauer greets his newest guest, haughty physician Rick Marshall, on his program. Based on the hypothesis of time warps, Rick has been researching quantum paleontology, a field that has required $50 million of study. Even more, he's written a book on it and is now requesting additional funding. Rick becomes enraged and leaves the studio when Matt, who naturally thinks the concept of parallel dimensions ridiculous, points out that every significant scientist in the area regards it as rubbish. However, he returns upon learning that Matt is insane and that he was about to fight him before security intervened. Rick is giving a talk about tachyons, which are subatomic particles that move so quickly that they travel backward in time. Three years later, with the help of his invention, the tachyon amplifier, they should be able to journey sideways through time to another dimension where the past, present, and future converge. Unfortunately, his audience is indifferent. After all, they are merely a group of children on a field trip with ridiculous questions. The only employment Rick could acquire following the television event was to give talks for children at a museum. Rick is told he is smart by Holly Cantrell, a doctorate candidate, who appears interested in his studies. She pulls out an old fossil with the imprint of a contemporary lighter to support her theory that he should complete creating the amplifier. Surrounded by Tachyon energy radiating crystals, such as the one she is wearing on her necklace, she discovered it in the desert. After examining the fossil, Rick pulls out his own lighter and places it on the imprint, where it fits flawlessly. He regains the hope he had lost because of this. Holly returns the following day to see how he's doing and discovers that he's emerging from his food coma. He worked through the night to complete the Tachyon amplifier, which he constructed out of common household items and which has some of residual data in the form of goofy melodies. Since he lacks the courage to test it, Holly accompanies him to the desert where the fossil was discovered. The issue is that they have to pay Will Stanton, the owner of the gift shop, to carry them there in his raft because the cave she used to explore has become a popular tourist destination. Will is trying to tell Rick and Holly some made-up myths about the cave, but they don't care. The cave has been arranged to look eerie. Rick activates the amplifier since there is a high tachyon reading in his cave, however, as soon as an earthquake occurs, the amplifier falls into the river. The raft is forced to the rear of the cave, which has miraculously grown deeper and brighter, as the floods underneath them become more violent. At the end of the ride, the three of them fall into a vortex of water. As Rick had predicted, this vortex turns out to be a time warp that transports them to the land of the lost, where the past, present, and future collide. They are on a vast desert that is encircled by various objects that have fallen there, such as Viking ships, and random, doors. The only problem is that they need to find the amplifier in order to get back home. They investigate after hearing a loud noise that indicates someone is nearby. Trio resolves to intervene to save the third evolved primate, that they discover ready to be sacrificed. When Will puts his lighter on the ground by accident, the animals simply collected and flee, despite his attempts to scare them away with the flame. Holly approaches the third creature to introduce herself as a friend, because she has studied primitive languages and they discover that he goes by Chaka. When Rick tries to examine Chaka's injured ankle, he freaks out and flees, so the trio pursues him. They ultimately fall into a secret sand pit that leads them to a bone-filled underground cave. The party starts swinging back and forth in an attempt to reach the trunk, but sentient vines ambush them from behind and grab them by the waist to hang them from a tree. When the T-Rex emerges on the other side, he tries to eat them, but misses them due to the swinging and chomps on the vines instead. This releases the group and causes them to fall on the ground. They then flee into the forest, stopping briefly to capture a photo of the T-Rex as evidence before heading up a mountain. In an attempt to deter the dinosaurs from pursuing him, Chaka has crossed a bridge so the three of them need to go very rapidly to avoid falling behind. They make it across to the other side barely in time, and the T-Rex exits after determining that the risk isn't worth it, after noticing how narrow the bridge is. But when it hears Rick explain that its brain is the size of a walnut, it decides to alter its mind, so it jumps over the distance and goes back to pursue them. The T-Rex gives up for good this time, once the party starts running again, and enters a different cave, with an opening too tiny for it to fit through. Will is certain that the dinosaur has been focusing its gaze on Rick, and Holly names it Grumpy. They choose to set up camp for the night after Chaka discovers the skeletons of two humans within this cave, along with a lot of their belongings, including a record player. Chaka tells them more about his life, using Holly as his interpreter. He is the prince of his people and has fallen victim to a cunning scheme to usurp his throne. His single transgression is excessive love, and he believes that he has been unfairly chastised because he has adapted well to the hamlet. Rick reaffirms to Will that dinosaurs had brains the size of walnuts when he tries to hide by placing some boxes in front of the cave entrance. They hurry outside to 
investigate as the cave starts to tremble and something hits it. To their surprise, the T-Rex has hurled a massive walnut at them. As a gesture of kindness, Chaka gives them some fruits for breakfast the next morning. However, because he views spiders as food, they are inside. A brilliant light emerges from amid the trees outside, causing the cave to tremble once more. Rick then starts to see strange visions of an extraterrestrial pleading with him for assistance. Accepting this request, he dashes into the bush, his group closing in behind him, until they discover an abandoned temple with strange statues and a crystal obelisk that has been communicating with Rick. These sculptures worry Chaka, so he tries to warn them about the creatures lurking in the shadows, but they are unable to understand him. As a result, the lizard-like entity sees the chance to emerge and encircle them. In an attempt to use her belt as a weapon, Holly pulls it off, which gives Rick the idea to use the belt buckle to reflect sunlight onto the obelisk and the statues, creating a portal that they can enter, but the aliens cannot. They enter a pocket universe through this portal, where Enik the alien that Rick saw, hides. He adds that the creatures outside are called Sleestacks, and they are attempting to use the power of the crystals to take over the entire globe. He needs the Tachian amplifier to fully release the crystal's power, in order to defeat them and send the three home. Rick agrees to assist, but Will doesn't think much of him. Rick draws a little map of the region when the gang returns to the forest, in an attempt to devise a strategy for locating the amplifier. He starts by masking their human odor with dinosaur urine that he has collected throughout the night. Rick uses it to shower himself twice, but his friends won't follow suit. But, the plan is foiled when Chuck appears, and requests that they follow him to some clues he has discovered. They head back into the desert, arriving at what Holly imagines to be the entrance, since it's crammed with improbable objects, including their raft. A group of dinosaurs, including Grumpy and his girlfriend, who are a very territorial species show up to feast on the ice cream guy as an ice cream truck falls from another time period. This indicates that they opt to pursue the group after smelling the urine. As the group starts to scatter, Grumpy catches Rick, but Rick breaks free when his laser pointer hits Grumpy in the eyes, causing him to drop him. After hiding out in a number of the buildings and cars that the dinosaurs keep demolishing, Rick crawls behind a large boulder, where he discovers a tank of liquid nitrogen. He grabs the tank and uses it to launch himself onto a catapult that Holly and Will had made for him. The amplifier, which had been in the female dinosaur's stomach the entire time, is revealed when the tank is shot into her mouth, causing it to burst into a million pieces. A pteranodon enters and takes it to its nest while hunting the smaller prey but not before it is attempted to be grabbed by a little dinosaur. Rick gives up on their hunt as a result, and Holly is wounded by this, since she had given up on a scientific career by following him and his wild theories, as she, Will, and Chaka return to the jungle to set up camp for the night. Holly continues to translate some of the stories Chaka shares with them about his life. His tribe is nomadic and goes where there is food, and he misses them. All of the men's demands are met by the ladies, and as Chaka is the prince, he has his own harem of attractive but attractive women. Rick, who has had plenty of time to reflect, interrupts their brief conversation to declare he won't quit up. He tries to make up for his attitude by playing a banjo melody but he gets exhausted from the big mosquito sucking his blood. Rick eventually passes out on top of the mosquito, which causes it to die. Rick just leads the group to the volcano where the amplifier and dinosaur nest are located the following morning, oblivious to the enormous welt on his back. Rick carefully weaves his way between the eggs, so as not to touch any of them before arriving at the amplifier, which has been playing music the entire time. However, the moment Rick switches it off, the eggs begin to hatch because the music has been lulling them to sleep. Rick begins to sing because he can't figure out how to switch the amplifier fire back on. His buddies quickly join him, including Chaka, who turns out to have a beautiful voice. The group escapes with the amplifier, and the baby dinosaurs return to their slumber. Returning to the desert to celebrate their achievement, they enjoy themselves in the pool and, as is customary in his village, Chaka gives Rick and Will some fruits. These fruits prove to be opiates, and Holly tests out the amplifier. As the three guys wait for the effects to wear off, it causes a second crystal obelisk to arise in the midst of the desert, which she enters to discover dinosaur eggs in a cave. She decides to keep one of the eggs. A warning message from the indigenous is displayed on a hologram, stating that Enik is the real villain, and that he is attempting to obtain the crystal's power for himself. Holly is taken prisoner by a slee stack before she can flee to tell her pals. The men eat a gigantic crab that fell into a hot spring and boiled, and then they go to sleep. When they wake up the next morning to find Holly gone, Rick sends Chaka on a mission. While he and Will explore the cave beneath the obelisk, the men steal the shed skins of the Sleestack guards who are taking a break to shed, then they put them on and act like they are also Sleestacks. Rick and Will now know the truth as well since they pursue the creatures to the temple, where Holly is being held captive and about to descend into lava for her assistance to Enoch. Rick gets on Holly's cage and starts swinging it back and forth to hit each creature and force them into the lava, since the Sleestacks want to capture them too. Holly begs them to hurry, 
so that Enoch doesn't discover them after they both leap out of the cage before it falls and share a kiss. But there's a small issue, Chaka was already dispatched to retrieve him. Subsequently, Enoch emerges with a horde of mind-controlled slee stacks using his personal crystal, robbing the amplifier before Grumpy arrived to tend to them. After sending Holly away for her own protection, Rick decides he can no longer flee and confronts the T-Rex. After failing to light some of the pyrotechnics Will had in his pocket, he discards them along with his lighter, creating the fossil Holly discovered. He next attempts a pole vault using the staff the slee stack priest was holding, but Grummy merely swallows him midair. Grumpy walks away, ignoring the others because Rick was his primary objective, and the slee stacks now head back to the temple. As the gang battles the overwhelming number of slee stacks, Enoch enters the obelisk and starts working the amplifier on the crystals. Abruptly, strong assistance shows up in the form of Rick riding Grumpy, who dispatches all of the adversaries in their immediate vicinity with ease. Rick informs Holly and Will how he's alive because they're curious. He was puked out by Grumpy who also managed to loosen an obstruction in his digestive tract in the process. Because of that, Grumpy is grateful and they have become friends. After passing through the obelisk portal, the gang discovers Enoch has already unlocked a time wrapped earth. When Will tries to assist Rick, he tilts the crystal tray, causing one to fall and break. Rick then jumps on Will and wrestles him to the ground. Rick immediately snatches Holly's crystal necklace to replace the broken one as the door closes as a result of this. Rick and Holly run to the door to escape when it opens again, but Enoch grabs Will and stops him from following suit. Will does a wrestling maneuver with Chaka's assistance to take out Enoch, then tells his friends to go without him. He is remaining here with Chaka and beginning afresh because he didn't really have a life back on Earth. At the entrance to the tourist cave in the desert, Holly and Rick pass through the portal and arrive back on Earth. Will is delighted to make friends with the ladies Chaka calls ugly when he brings him to meet his tribe. In the meantime, Will discovers that the women are actually quite human-like. A year later, Rick makes another television appearance to gloat over Matt Lauer's achievements. He gets Matt to jump on him and punch him when he shows everyone the dinosaur egg Holly brought with her and talks about his new book. Matt Lauer can suck it. Following the conclusion of the program, the egg that has been laying on the table hatches revealing that it is not from a dinosaur, but rather contains a newborn sleestack. <laughs>